This is Benny Howe, and if you're a frequent traveler to this channel, you will know that I am high-key obsessed with him. So I know what you're thinking. No, this is not stalking footage. This is him bowling in full knowledge that I have this Sapruda-like film of him, and it's not mine. I actually think Benny would feel a little bit uncomfortable at this point if I asked to film him. This is the last knot. My dad told me to say this. This footage is from Graham Thorne, who is behind the Instagram account High Viz Cricket. Graham started this up when he kept reading and hearing me talk about edutronic cameras in all my work. The brief history of these cameras is that they were designed to film hummingbirds who actually moved too quickly for traditional slow motion cameras. So people built these devices so that you could see the bird moving. Here is some Roy Dunn footage of a hummingbird at a thousand frames per second. I heard about all this by reading the MVP machine, which is about how data has changed the way they develop baseballers. Think of it as like the 3D version of Moneyball. It's an incredible book, and I'm pretty sure that's when I first heard about these cameras, or at least that's when I understood how they were being used specifically in baseball. So I started writing and mentioning them on my podcast as much as I could. And they come up a lot because I think that cricket should have them. It just seemed really obvious to me how they would help. Baseball has a few different kinds of pitches. We have an absolute buttload worth of deliveries though. Some that we have actually just taken from baseball. And then a bunch that were invented ourselves. The ability to bounce the ball on the ground changes things up quite a lot. But the other thing I noticed from the MVP machine, and just following baseball even from a distance, is that pitch creation is a business in that sport. And there's absolutely no reason why it shouldn't be in cricket as well. People like Driveline Baseball are working with cameras like this and other devices to ensure that pitches get better and they can actually design new pitches. I just want the same for cricket. Graham over at High Viz Cricket noticed that I kept going on about this. And not only that, he saw that these cameras were relatively cheap. It's not like they're a hundred grand or anything. Graham is not part of cricket. He's just a guy who was fascinated by all this and he thought that the camera would be a great investment. When he got it, the next thing was that he had to find some people to record. He started with himself. And I show this only to let you laugh at Graham's bowling a little bit in the slowest motion that I have available to me. But he obviously knew that he'd need to get others in front of it. This is Arunga Mendes, who is now a spin bowling coach in London. Graham was filming lots of people like this to get more and more used to the camera and also to learn better about how he could help people with it. But what he obviously really wanted to do was contact top level players and see if he could help any of them or at least show them the camera. But he didn't really know any. So he got back in touch with me and I just sent out some messages for him. I honed in on three players who I thought might be interested in something like this. Sun on the Rhine, R. Ashwin and Benny Howe. I figured out that they would all be intellectually curious enough to want to see themselves bowl in 4,000 frames a second. And then also they're the kind of bowlers who might learn something. So far, the only player who's been able to do it has been Benny. And that worked out great for Graham as he could literally film the man with 50 different slow balls. And that's not an exaggeration. Benny Hal has created more slower variations than the rest of cricket combined. He has variations on his variations that are co-opted from the original variations. He still hasn't played for England, and while he has been torching T20 batters for ages, he really hasn't gotten off the bench much in major T20 tournaments. But he has appeared in the PSL, BBL, BPL, and was also drafted in the IPL last season. At almost 34 years old, it would appear like his chances of a major career are passing him by. But it is actually worth looking at the crib notes on this spectacularly weird career. Benny Howe was a batter with Hampshire who bowled a little bit of part-time medium pace. He was good enough to make a first-class double hundred in county cricket, but he was asked to leave the club after he was dropped for a match, and so Benny just went on holiday thinking he wasn't needed anymore. As you can probably imagine, professional cricket teams are not a big fan of someone just leaving because they've been dropped. It turned out that one of the reasons that Benny did this is because he has ADHD, but at that stage he had not been diagnosed. The problem was that there was a stigma around Benny Howe. And he actually couldn't get any other county teams, despite the fact he was obviously talented enough to be in the system. He ended up offering to play for Gloucestershire for free just to get another job. And that's where he started to rebuild his career. But it was actually playing club cricket in Melbourne where everything changed for him. Because while he was there, he played a little bit of baseball and he did some relief pitching. And that's when he fell in love with that art. From there, he basically learned all the different kinds of pitches he could use and how he could transfer them to cricket. According to him, this is where his ADHD actually came into his assistance because he was absolutely obsessed and single-minded about perfecting these new methods. And unlike other cricketers, he wasn't dissuaded by coaches saying this wasn't the right way to go. 
He was convinced that these new deliveries were the right way. So what did Benny Howe do with these new baseball-inspired tricks? Well, he goes okay. You could say that he takes his rubbish 120, 125 kilometer an hour medium pace and becomes one of the best T20 bowlers in the world. Look at him here. He's in the same cluster as Muhammad Amir and Jasprit Bumrah. I mean, come on now. But people still didn't believe. In English cricket, they thought this was the Darren Stevens effect. Essentially, a medium pace are doing well because, you know, he's bowling a lot in England. Except that when he played outside of England, he also did well. Then they said it was because he was playing at Gloucester, and that's a low, slow wicket that had helped other slow ball bowlers like Ian Harvey over the years. Except for the fact he did really well away from that ground also. Then they said his numbers didn't matter anyway. Who would want a rubbish medium pacer? Which was completely overlooking the fact that he actually wasn't a medium pacer at all anymore. He was, if anything, a fast spinner. Most of his deliveries are more like spin than anything that slow ball bowlers deliver. And finally, they said that the majority of his cricket was played in the blast. That was obviously thought of as a fairly low competition, which is fair. There was a lot of teams there. There weren't a lot of big, big name internationals. Certainly there weren't four overseas players in every side. Of course, then in England, they had the 100, where he has not only bowled the most balls so far, but also been an absolute gun. Here he is in the same cluster with Adol Rasheed, England's main white ball spinner. And think about this. This is a guy who only really perfected bowling very late in his professional career with a method that really doesn't exist that much outside of him. And he did all this with a mental health issue that he was still coming to grips with. It just is, without doubt, one of the craziest stories in modern cricket. I mean, when you look at his career before he did that relief pitching in amateur baseball in Melbourne, the chances are that Benny Howe might not even be a professional cricketer anymore. Certainly not on the IPL bench or playing for the England Lions. He'd probably be teaching kids at a posh school by this age. And instead, here he is, still developing these slow balls, and he also really enjoyed using Graham's camera to work on it. And yeah, I am obsessed because stories like this don't happen often in cricket. And that is even before you get to the technology side of things. We know that Benny Howell is doing things that others haven't done. Hence the 183 wickets at 22 while going at just over seven runs and over in T20 cricket. And now through Graham's initiative, we can plug Benny Howell into this hummingbird device and see how he flaps his wings. Filming Benny and any of these other players that Graham manages to drag in front of his super slow device could actually help improve cricket. We can learn things from this camera that we have never been able to see before. In fact, filming Benny Howe or any player in front of this device will allow us to learn a lot about cricket that we've just never been able to see before. But it's also quite fitting that one of the first people to step in front of this advanced device is one of the most advanced cricketers in the world. Benny Howe is from the future. And through modern technology and Graham's initiative, we get to see how Cricket's hummingbird flaps his wings. <laughs>